marijuana and violent behavior. And this is often the hardest one for people to believe, uh, but it's really quite well documented. Um, and, uh, and, you know, people will say, well, I use pot and I never got violent. And the thing is, that's the whole marijuana denial thing, because nobody will say, well, I've had a drink and I never drove drunk and killed somebody. That doesn't mean nobody else does. Or, you know, nobody would ever say, well, I took oxycodone once for pain and I didn't get addicted. So who, this, this doesn't happen. Nobody would say that. And the reason is we know that opioids are addictive and we know that drunk driving is dangerous, not really from our personal experience, but through the news media. As Will Rogers said, everything I know is what I read. All I know is what I read in the papers. And the news media is not reporting on marijuana and violence. In fact, they report terribly on marijuana. And the, this whole issue, the reason this is an issue is um, news outlets allow marijuana users to report on this issue or to dictate what gets covered. And there's a study of the news media coverage of medical marijuana. And what they found is the stories were six times more likely to be positive as negative. And even the negative ones were more about that it's confusing rather than it's a bad idea. The news coverage for marijuana has been overwhelmingly positive. Uh, and so people aren't going to hear about this. Um, in fact, what I like to say is if, it weren't, if the press had covered this well, we wouldn't have a single medical marijuana or legalization law in this country. Anyway, here's a study that was done in 2016. Regular marijuana users convicted of violent crimes at seven times the rate of non-users. Yes, it is involved in violence. Not everyone has a drink of alcohol becomes violent, but we know that some do. Uh, mental illness, people with schizophrenia, the violence is mostly due to substance abuse. Um, schizophrenics without substance abuse, maybe twice the rate of violence. With substance abuse, nine times the rate of violence. Um, Anyway, um, regular teenage marijuana users, people who use marijuana in their teen years, especially their early teen years, when they're adults, they're twice as likely to perpetrate domestic violence. Um, okay, the next couple stories are kind of grisly and they're just stories, but they're really important because this is happening. This is what's in Alex Berenson's book. So um, I got this one out. Lionel Richie's basis stabs himself repeatedly after ingesting edibles, marijuana edibles. Uh, paramedics rushed to a San Fernando Valley apartment where they found Ethan Farmer bleeding profusely. Farmer had eaten either pot brownies or cookies and went off the rails. The 42-year-old has some friends over and they were chowing down on edibles when Farmer suddenly turned violent on himself. And this is not that uncommon a story. Um, when I worked in the jail, I didn't see people who hurt themselves, but I did see people who hurt others. Um, more similar to this story. Uh, accused killer told cops that bong hits led to violent episode. Uh, this is a, a woman who tried marijuana for the first time with her new boyfriend and felt she was dying. And I remember as a teenager getting a friend of mine stoned once who actually had this reaction. Unfortunately, she didn't do the rest of it. She just felt that she was dying. Um, this person went on. Um, she then believed that she was dead and had to hurt her boyfriend to bring herself back to life. She began stabbing him, hearing voices saying the violence would bring her back to life. He died with 108 stab wounds. Then the voices told her to stab herself and she stabbed her neck several times, requiring emergency surgery. Um, I worked in the county jail. Um, and uh, I, I'm just gonna tell you about a couple of people I saw, I, because I read, you know, I read Alex Berenson's book and I said, oh, I've seen this. Um, when I worked there, I saw, you know, most of the people with violence, meth was the biggest threat for violence. But the typical meth addict in jail has been arrested 10 times. Everybody knows his first name and he's back. Um, the typical marijuana patient in jail for violence has never committed a crime in his life um, and is shocked at what they did. So I actually saw a patient who had killed his girlfriend and his dogs and cut off his own arm under the influence of marijuana. Never been arrested for anything before. Um, I saw a guy in his mid-20s who lived in a state where they didn't have a medical marijuana law. He smoked marijuana all the time there. Moved to Arizona where we had medical marijuana. He started getting this high-potency weed from the dispensaries, and he committed an armed robbery. And I saw him in jail, and he did not know why he did it. Um, I saw this guy who's a computer programmer, um, full-time job, but he was smoking dispensary weed all the time and he stabbed and killed his stepfather. And then I saw somebody else who um, 
became he was, a, he was smoking dispensary weed, became suddenly suicidal, decided to kill himself, drove his car into somebody else, uh, killed the person he drove into, didn't kill himself. And he kept saying, I've never been suicidal. He'd never had any psychiatric treatment in his life. He, could, he just could not understand why he did that. Um, and that's that's a common thing that I see with this. I mean, it's, it's not that common a thing, but if you work in a jail, I realize in one year in jail, I saw those four cases. So it's not that uncommon. Uh, the problem is when, when violence gets reported in the press, often the drugs don't get reported. And we know most violence has to do with drugs and alcohol, but just usually the, the press doesn't cover it. So here's the last one. Um, these people have two things in common. Uh, they've been in the news for high profile mass killings and heavy marijuana use. And I'm just going to go through them. From the bottom left, Jared Loeffner, who killed six people in Arizona and wounded Representative Gabriel Giffords, became schizophrenic in the midst of heavy marijuana use in high school. Lakeisha Holloway drove into a crowd in Las Vegas, killed one person high on marijuana. Uh, Randall Holmes, the uh, Aurora, Colorado movie shooter, um, it's debatable. Some of the news stories I've read said he didn't use drugs, but others said that he did use drugs, and especially marijuana. Um, Devin Patrick Kelly, who killed 26 people at a Texas Baptist church, uh, they found marijuana and other drugs in the system. He had a past charge for marijuana possession. Um, Dylan Roof, who killed nine people in Charleston, South Carolina, was a regular marijuana user, also used other drugs. Uh, the Sonarov brothers, the Boston Marathon bombers, both were heavy marijuana users and Robert Louis Deere, Planned Parenthood shooter, um, regular marijuana users. So, I, you know, anecdotal evidence, but I think this connection is very real. Um, I think the epidemic of mass killings has it's been on the increase. Um, it might have as much to do with the drugs that are available now um, as with the easy available, easy availability of guns. Um, and this is one part of it we're not focusing on. I just want to mention Alex Berenson's book, Tell Your Children. He's a New York Times investigative reporter. He wrote a really good book on marijuana and violence. He's getting a lot of criticism and pushback from people on this.